Hi there! You're watching the Gardens and Graveyards channel. My name is Charisma and today we're in the studio and we're going to start some seeds. I'm a little behind in my seed starting this year. It's the last day of January. I really should have been starting seeds a couple of weeks ago, especially two of these seeds that I'm planting today really needed to be started maybe even late December, but better late than never, right? Um, so I've already prepped all of my soil. We're going to do a little winter sowing and we're going to do a little, um, I don't know what this is called, like crop sowing or something. We're not doing individual cells, um, you know, like a six pack or a 72 pack cell, um, planter thing. We're actually just going to use these, what are these ones? They're all strawberry containers. They have little holes for breathing, you know, for the strawberries to breathe, um, which makes perfect drainage holes. And they have holes on the top here, which helps release some of the like extra humidity and moisture that could be created. But we could also close them and they could be individual little greenhouses. It's a win, win, win situation with these guys. Um, and my plan is to start these particular seeds and then once they get some growth happening on them then I will carefully transplant them into individual cells in some different kind of um, growing medium. I am out of seed starting mix which is another reason why we're not doing them in um, cells because I they don't have as good of drainage and the seeds just do better on seed starting mix. I made my own potting soil. It is regular organic potting soil, indoor outdoor mix, and tons and tons of perlite to create tons of drainage um, because I don't have that seed starting mix. Um, it's not as light as I would like it to be, but I think it'll work for these seeds for the time being. Um, depending on the seed that I'm doing, I may put vermiculite on the top of the soil mixture before I put the seeds in, or I may put vermiculite on the top after. Either way, all of these are going to get vermiculite because that really helps, um, it really helps prevent any kind of like fungal issues that the soil may breed. So today is going to be pretty simple. I have all of these seeds need to go get started indoors, um, but I need to wait and get my seed starting mix for those. So today we're just going to do this little handful. Some of them, like I said, are going to go winter sowing and some of them are going to go in here. So, um, and some of them are going to do both. So I have some generic snapdragons. And these are from American Seed. And um, I have really great luck with American Seed. They've been um, in business since 1897. So they might just know what they're doing. Uh, but this is just like a mix. It shows like a pinky magenta color, a red, a white, and a yellow. And these will go in my front yard with all the like fun cottagey flowers. And then I have um, Madam Butterfly Ivory Snapdragon, and they're a cutting flower snapdragon, so they have really tall stems. And this is from Johnny Seed. We put some of these in raised beds, fall planting, which I had never done before. I don't see any new growth yet. That doesn't surprise me entirely, um, but I am gonna use some of them and uh, get them started indoors as well because I really want to grow these. These will go in our black and white garden. Then these three, let's see. Well, and then in the um, outdoor ones, I still want, let's see, I have a couple other things for the outdoor. Um, I have a foxglove, which is Alba. It's a white foxglove. I'm going to put those in some outdoor container starts. And I think those are it. Oh, and then honey wart. I want to try 
doing penny wart in a winter sewing situation as well. Then these three are going to get started in, indoors. So the first one is a fever few. It is Magic Single OG. And I don't really remember the specifics on this one. So um, Johnny Seeds has tons of fantastic information on the back of their packets, but they do not have um, pictures. So it's harder to kind of remember, but we're gonna start some of those inside. It says, to start them five to seven weeks before transplanting in spring or fall. So I missed the fall window, so we're gonna do spring. Um, it says to gently press the seeds into medium, do not cover as light aids germination. So this is one that I will put vermiculite down first. And then these two that I'm gonna start indoor are Lysianthus and I've never grown Lysianthus before and I I don't know so Johnny's seed suggests that you sow them 12 to 13 weeks in deep cell packs before the last frost what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna plant there's a minimum of 50 seeds in here so I'm gonna plant like 12 or so not even half of the seeds um, to see if I could get them going for spring. Um, then my other Lysianthus, so these ones are Johnny's, is Roseanne Black Pearls. It's a super deep purple color. And then from Park Seed, I got Charisma White. And um, they say that I should sow them early spring six to eight weeks before the night temperatures reach 55 degrees. So six weeks before night temperatures at 55 is like May. Um, so again, I'm gonna start this. Let's see how many it has, I think it tells me. Oh, 25 seeds. So I'm only gonna do like 10 of these seeds just to see if they come up. Um, and then I will start a second round of them late April. And then those will be ready at the more appropriate time. But I might have, these ones that I'm gonna do today might just be a, a bigger plant to put out in the landscape. It's all an experiment. Um, I've never grown them, so we'll just see what happens. This says to bottom water and place in a warm location, 68 to 70 degrees. I don't even keep my house that hot. Um, our, our temperature is set at 68 and it kicks off all the time. Um, so I am, I'm gonna put them on a new seed mat. So I picked up a seedling heat mat and basically they are the size of a typical um, nursery. They look like this. It lays down like this and you leave the verbiage on the top. It's basically the same size as a seed tray. And so it goes right underneath the seed tray like this and it keeps things warm. Um, this one does not have a temperature gauge on it, so I'll have to use a, a soil thermometer and just see where the soil's at and just kind of keep my eye on it. Okay, so what else does it say? Um, this one says spread moist grow mix in a shallow container. Sow seeds every very thinly in a shallow rose. Do not cover with mix as light is required for germination. And then bottom water and place in warm location. Uh, keep moist during germination for 10 days. After the seedlings are visible, remove plastic, which is the, the greenhouse top, right? Oops. Um, and then immediately place container in a protected bright sunny location where temperatures are 85 degrees such as a bright southwest window or outside in a wind protected area for five weeks 
Oh my gosh, and keep moist. Um, if grown indoors, move outdoors the last weeks to harden off. When four leaves have developed and weather is warm and settled, transplant 10 to 12 inches apart in good garden soil. So these are way more finicky than I like to mess around with, but we're just going to try. Maybe that's just a story I've told myself that they're too finicky. So let's start with the, with the fever few. We're going to put vermiculite on the top here. Let's see. I'm going to put this down so you can see what I'm doing. Move this one out of the way. Okay. All right. So, bag of vermiculite. And I'm going to spread it over the top pretty thickly because uh, I just don't want any fungus issues to happen. I have pre-moistened all this soil so that I don't have to worry about when I, when I do spray the, the seeds down, I don't want them getting lost in the soil or like sinking down into the soil. Okay. Okay. So fever few. Again, they just want to be right on top. Do not cover. When they're, when the seeds are super tiny, you have this packet. And then you have this packet and oh my gosh these are the tiniest seeds you can see those little tiny tiny seeds Whoa. That is super tiny. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to carefully sprinkle them. There's so few that I don't want them to be super close together. But they're so small, it's just impossible to try to plant them individually. Okay. So as I've done in the past, I just uh, write the date of when I started them right on the package if I don't have any seeds left. And this is fever few. I do want to put a little tiny bit of moisture right on the top. Okay. So put these right in this tray just like that. And they'll go underneath lights and on the seed mat. These don't want they need to they need light to germinate. We just put vermiculite on the top and carefully remove this so I keep all my literature. Okay. Alright, so then these things come in these little tiny, they come, they come in a tiny pill, I think they're called pill packs, right? Like you can buy these to stuff your herbs in and make your own pills. So let's see if you can get, oh, there we go. Can see how tiny those seeds are. And then this time I do want to be really careful. This one has 25 seeds and I only want to plant half of them. And I just dropped the whole thing. Well, I'm really glad I didn't do that when I opened it. Okay, so we're gonna carefully open this. Very good. Keep it so I can 
Oh my goodness. Take all of them out. Okay, then I carefully put these back in there, hopefully. Ooh. Wow, that's pretty intense, actually. Okay, so. Take those in there and okay, tiny bit of water on the top. Close it up. This one was Charisma. Light. I couldn't resist. We got a Charisma, Lysanthus, and a Spencer um, Sweet Pea this year. All right, now we're going to do the other Lysanthus. I'm guessing it's going to be just as tiny, but we have more seeds. 50 in here. I'm going to do the same thing. All right. So, Johnny's has sent me the Lysianthus in this kind of a container. By the way, does it say on here? Pelleted. Does this say? Pelleted. So those seeds were pelleted, which means really tiny seeds. They will put a little coating on. It's like a, I don't think it's plastic, but it's some sort of coating that's around the seed so that you could see them better and you can handle them better. So how small are these seeds? Whoa. Now, Johnny's has made their pellets. Johnny's seeds have made their pellets a little bit bigger. You can see them a little bit there. Um, which means there's like a thicker coating. Shouldn't mean that the, the seed is all that much bigger. Okay, so again, I'm not, I'm not even gonna plant half of these. There was 50, I'll do like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's, there's 17 here. I was, I was going for 15. 17 is fine. So, again, very carefully put them out. Okay. So, these are the Xanthus. Roseanne Black Pearl. Now, uh, these are going to be for the indoor 
Snapdragon. So this is Madam Butterfly. And we have, again, little guys in the packets. There was 50. There's so little. Okay. Um, okay. Again, we're going to put some vermiculite on the top. guys since I've already planted a bunch outside I'm gonna go ahead and plant the rest of these in this little container just see what these are. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to try these three in here. So the Snapdragon's really tiny, so I'm going to put those in this one. There's a lot. I don't need that many in this one. I'm just gonna, but I am gonna sew pretty heavily um, because these are gonna go outside. They will be a lot colder. And <clears throat> It's a little bit harder to get them to germinate sometimes. Okay. Then what we do is take a piece of duct tape. If you're interested more in winter sewing, I'll link below the last time I did a bunch of winter sewing and you could check out how I do this. Basically, we just cut open a bottle, fill it with soil, tape it up, and you want this off uh, so rain can go down inside of it. And then I always label this. These are snapdragons. One twenty nine, and the marker seems to stay on the tape a little bit better than on the plastic. Uh, all right, and so we've done snapdragons, and then we're gonna do honeywort in here. Honeywort is a pride of Gilbachar. Serenth Major. There is a town just north of us, and it's called Neskowin, and there they have neighborhoods filled with all these beautiful gardens. And one of my favorite gardens has honeywort, and I absolutely love it, and I've been wanting to grow it, and I'm really excited to do that this year. So to get these started, um, start in the um, what I'm looking at is it's, a, this is a pretty good size seed. Let's see how big that seed is. And so all I'm going to do is pop them in 
at about twice the depth of this seed. Make a little divot in here. And pop the seeds in that way. I'm also going to try growing these in trays um, when I have my seed starting mix. So I have plenty here to start in the trays. Probably just in a few days. <laughs> I just need it. I forgot that I didn't have any um, the last time I was somewhere there was seed starting mix. So. Uh, and these are going to go outside. It'll start raining here in the next day or two. So I'm just getting the surface wet, knowing that the rain will take care of the rest of this. I just want to make sure that the seeds have moisture on them so they can start go going. Going and growing. Okay, same thing. I'm gonna label it. Honey wart. Gonna do is the foxglove. Foxgloves are a biennial, which means the first year they will create a little plant, and then the second year, then okay, so the first year they'll create a little plant. They'll generally die all the way back and be completely gone. All leaves are gone. The second year the plant will come back up, and it will put up a bloom stock and create blooms and then seed and you could collect the seed and start over again. Often biennials are really good at self seeding. So they'll go to seed, they'll drop the seed, a new plant will come up the following year. So if you let that happen, you'll just have a consistent cycle of flowers. Um, so this year I will just get plants and then next year, I'll get to experience the white flowers. Some of these um, foxglove cultivars, such as this one, this is from Floret, and this is Alba, so it's white, Digitalis purpurea Alba. Um, some cultivars have been bred so that they bloom in the first year. So this one is saying that if I uh, plant a seed, plant seedlings in the garden six weeks before your first frost, then the plant will winter over in the garden and bloom the following spring. Um, I did plant seeds in the garden, but not seedlings in the garden in the fall. So <clears throat> I might have a different experience. What I might do is Go ahead and get some started and then hold some of those seedlings in four inch containers and put those out later in the fall. We'll just see how it goes. Um, these are really small. So I'm actually going to make sure the soil is nice and wet and then put my seeds. Not using all my seedlings. I might try starting some seeds this summer to have little plants, seedlings to put out in the fall. I might do that as well, or instead of, we'll just see. So, so just throw these on here. It's 
quite a lot of seeds for this small area, but I could always thin them out or I could divide them and save them. Um, I'm gonna put just a little vermiculite on top of this one. Foxglove. Okay, that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it and you got some inspiration. Um, it's never too late to try seeds. It's never too um, risky to try something a little outside of what the packet suggests. Um, just, it's all a trial and experience up in the garden. You know, all of our gardens are individual and each one of us are individual, so so long as you, um, you know, pay a little bit of attention to what your seeds need, if you can provide the, can, if you can provide the environment that they're looking for, you just might be able to get them to go even when it's against the conventional sense. I think it's always worth if I if I have the time and space and energy to try something, it's worth it to me just to experience experiment with it and find out what works for us. Um, maybe you'll be successful, maybe you'll fail, but that is just the mystery of life and you get to learn from it. And I think it's all worth trying. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go put these on the seed heat mat and put the, the winter sowing containers outside. Call it a day. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, ring the bell, um, share this with friends and family, and let's keep growing this beautiful channel and our community. Until the next time, keep celebrating your life. Bye. Okay, there we go. All underneath the grow lights. The heat mat is under there. And this one's not on the heat mat, but it is on these lights, which are a little bit warm see if that helps it a little bit. We've got the ranunculus that we just recently sprouted and look at how big they're already getting. So I lowered this light today um, so that they stop stretching quite so far. But then we've got all of our baby uh, African violets down there and a few more right here that we've got to do something with.